There we go. So we are now live with the recording. Hellcleef says one auto. We are going to do a solo CCC just to compare against the multiplayer. We saw that when we incorporated a force into the CCC uh, for the first time on stream and also first time ever uh, for me personally. Uh, we did see an improvement. However, I am kind of curious how things will balance out against, you know, lower EDK because it's multiplayer versus single player and or a combination of evasion being reduced in single player as well as ATP. So things like the Del Saber are not as brutal. So we're going to go ahead and make a blue ID in parameter. Exactly. As for Hellcleave's requests, we're going to do the classic one auto. Maybe this will inspire the chat. <laughs> That's... It loves making them short, I've noticed. It loves making them short. So as a reminder, we're going to go through each of the rotations of characters. So we have... We'll do head number one. That's actually kind of an interesting hair color with the robot. I don't know if I like the rest of the colors, but I, I kind of think that's interesting. So we have number one. Number two. And we'll do a little rotation. If we want the long ponytail thing in the back. Number three for the pigtails. Number four... Depending on the character, looks more or less like a helmet. Number five, which is like a massive... Hmm. I don't know how to describe that style helmet. It's it's very solid at the top, where this one is more of a... To the sides and edges kind of helmet. No worries, Murphy. Good luck with work. So we have a ton of colors to go through. So we're going to start with uh, row by row. So if chat feels any particular head or if they want to see a head with a certain color, we're just going to continue forward. We're going to do for row one. Thank you for the lurk. Row one, row two, row three. So right now we're on row one with the colors. So there's no skin color chooser. So for the most part, it's just having all these ones. Exactly. I think the body color will probably help the chat pick the rest. Because sometimes it looks like hair. Sometimes it just looks like metal we can see how it looks so we're gonna go one by one so row one number one is pink number two is blue oh i got that working look at that chat i fixed that between streams i did it number three is yellow number four is kind of a green we want to go our baran's route number five is a purple it says it looks more pink to me in the color select but it looks very deep purple here we have black. I think I've used this on a couple characters already. You can kind of see the RNG kind of hair underneath. Number seven is a nice white color. Number eight is feeling very red. Number nine, they're feeling kind of a... Uh, not quite sky blue. It's more like, like a cyan. It's like little hints of green in there. We're going to go back to... I'll call it the tiki colors for row number two, option number one. Mix of purple and red. We got the blue robot, number two. Number three is kind of a brown, even though it lists it as yellow. We have another green alternative, that's number four. Number five is more of a light purple. Looks like a... Yeah, just light purple. Number six, we have an orange and black. It's a very striking outfit. Number seven is mostly white and kind of very pale blue. Slate, I think, is the color. Number eight is an interesting red combination. I think we saw that used by somebody else in the stream to very nice effect. I think I do like this outfit overall. Even if we don't choose it today, I might make a character that just looks like that. I really like that color combo. Number nine is a very striking dark green and yellow combination. Row number three is a light pink variation with mostly steel grays. Number two is a blue... Not quite, like, deep blue. It's more like a medium to light blue kind of shade. Yellow kind of reminds me of a bumblebee. Nothing on the back of this character. Number four is a light green with gray. Number five is kind of a pink purple. Number six is a black with some blue highlights. And a couple of medium gray slash steel kind of plates. And finally, we have one that is... A lighter version of the prior one, where instead of having mostly black as the focus, it's a mix of gray. Oakleave is saying row three, number two. We have a solid blue. It almost looks like the, it almost looks like they have brown hair underneath. So let's go back to the head choices and see how they look with this character. Right now we have option number five. 
option number one. We kind of had blonde hair. With uh, blue eyes matching our outfit. Number two is kind of like a... Kind of have bangs on our character, followed by a ponytail on the back. Number three is the classic pigtail helmet. Although this time it doesn't... This time it looks like we have a clear set of hair. Number four is kind of a more formal helmet, and we have a little bit of a... I guess our eyes are a little closer together. I didn't realize the head shape changed a bit. The number one has, like, really big eyes, but then, like, number three and number four, it gets smaller. Finally, we have a kind of slimmer head under number five. If chat has any feelings toward any particular head, let us know. I'm going to leave it on number five, but don't let that assume that is a choice. Since there are some interesting options in here. Number two is good, says Helcleave. I kind of like it. kind of like it. I usually pick a more human rock seal or like a robot. <laughs> I don't know why. I guess it's a personal obsession. I like the idea that their armor is very mechanical and then they have like a very human face. So right now we're kind of in the super short and super skinny. So if we stretch her up, she becomes kind of a... Kind of an adult size Then we have the little kid size. So she could become very short or very tall. So I'm just going to show things off. So I'm going to leave it on the tall for now. We can slim her down if we want to. Interestingly, the other slider seems to make the ribbons on our back wider. Like, it doesn't seem to otherwise affect our proportions that much. There are some options to make our shoulders a bit bulkier. So if Chad is feeling anything in particular, let me know. Right now, I have her kind of in the peak of tall and skinny, just to see how that looks. Middle height. And yeah, we're going to put it, like, here, I'm assuming. If you want me to go down a line or something, just make a mention. Or up a line, I guess. Kind of an interesting, interesting character. I kind of like the narrower face with that uh, particular uh, character design. Yeah, I think it actually looks good for the most part. Just curious if anything else is really worth it. Yeah. Kind of like it where it is. So we're going to leave that for now. So we have a chat selected character. And finally, we uh, have to come up with a character name. Yeah. So, <laughs> I'm trying to recall what we called some of our other ones. Welcome back, Promethean. We're in the character name generation phase of creating the character. I think if I recall correctly, chat was torn between a few names. I know one was Riz Kassil, so it was like this. So I will put that in tentatively, but if chat has any particular name for the character they'd like to see, by all means. But if chat wants to do some kind of puns on blue, we will be doing a blue ID. Mick Riz Seal. I was gonna say, it almost sounds like Mick Rib. <laughs> or a Kesson 2 soundtrack. I can't believe we're almost done with it. We barely started the recording. Such a good game, but man. Nick Rizzo Seal. How's chat feeling? Do you like the names that are being suggested? Do you like the name that's in there? There's something that calls to you, that speaks to your heart. I know the perfect soundtrack to put on as we play. Uh oh. Everybody's thinking. They're in deep thought. They're like, oh no. Key Collector version 2. Yeah, blue names are kind of interesting. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm not very creative with some of the names. I know, for example, my blue ID character is literally just named Azure. Or sometimes if I'm playing other games, I call them Azure Blues. 
Or blue. Hmm. Cyan cookies? Oh no. Promethean pushing the cookie agenda. Blue Casile. Hmm. That's interesting. I mean, to be fair, I do name a lot of my characters after colors because I definitely forget what their ID is. So if we if we want to tune it down a little, it's all up to chat. But it's it's all on you, chat. You are the decider. Promethean says, oh, let's go under Nesher. Azul Casil? Maybe. How does chat feel about that suggestion? Okay, we got a second. Well, it sounds like we are going to do this. We're going to name the character Azul Kasil. Burn, Chibi Bird. Damn chat. You can tell I played this game. I knew that line. <laughs> I felt it in my heart, chat. You could tell I played it a few times. That is my one of my favorite cutscenes, to be fair. Okay, let's just go with Azul Kasil. So this is the final character. I think chat has otherwise selected it. Let's see. What is the ID that it'll default us as? Leo Bay. Yeah, yeah, Leo Bay. We'll move out of the intro of the game. Ooh, it did white ID. That's so sad. So close. Uh, no Promethean. It's continuing until next week. Let's get situated. And then as soon as we get equipped, we're going to switch to the soundtracks. So as always, to help us out, quadruple heavenly arms. Super accuracy. We need some hell items. Wedding dress would help. You want a one will help. If you five or two is mandatory. Uh, no. This is just a solo run. We'll be doing multiplayer later. I'm gonna do the quadruples. And then we should be good here. There we go. We're going to go ahead and drop these items. Yeah, don't worry. We're going to be helping people level. If you have characters you want to level, by all means. We'll help you with that soon. No, no. I want to make sure we help the, the chat a little bit. I think we're good to go. I forget if I made that a single player game or not. So I'm just going to experimentally slash lobby. Because I honestly don't remember. I should have paid attention. Or else I could have just hopped into the game. I don't trust myself. I'm assuming I just did normal, normal. Alright, so I got a perfect soundtrack I'm going to put on for the rest of this playthrough. We're going to take a moment to set up our stuff. So we need access to our healing. say it's this. It should be fine for now. Okay. Alright, step number one. How accurate are we? Step number two. Where the heck is our special attack? Game, please. Oh, this is just so whack. Hold on. 
if we die here, it's fine. There we go. Now we have a little bit of a head start here. I like that I can actually just kill them with ATP because the weapon is so strong. So I waited a couple levels for those that aren't aware. So we are at, I think, normally like 177 ATA and you need 180 in order to wield the Hellshot. So what I end up doing is just swapping into what we need there. Yeah, that back attack is just mean. pick up some healing in a moment. Fortunately, these enemies can't really hurt us aside from Indy Belra and Hildebear. Everything else doesn't really have a good chance of hitting us. Downside, though, enemies at full end of the screen. Not much I could do about them. And okay, we want to pick as many Trimates as we can for later. Soul Animators are not bad in case I get zapped. Unfortunately, since this is an ultimate mode, the Lilies can't really do anything. As long as I'm not, like, literally right against them, they can't hit me at all. We'll be picking up an important item at 41, which will be our Ranger Wall. Yeah, we're going to make sure at the end of each of these clears, we try to pick up as many soul atomizers as we can and or try mates. It'll save us some time later. But I think after this, if the chat wants uh, to be leveled in CCC, we'll probably just keep leveling this character. So the intent being is if I V502 as a reminder, it basically doubles our chance of hell. Now, chat can correct me what the exact percentage is. I want to say it's 82. But essentially, you take their 25 or 35 resistance, and then from there, you double the difference. So let's say they have 10 resistance and we have an 82% chance. 72 times 2 equals they're dead. But they need to have fairly high EDK for it to impact us at all. Oh, I just remembered. I'm going to need a Cannon Rouge for later or a Fire Trap. We're going to learn in real time where I have to stand for the quest. So definitely apologies. This quest is like something I only literally started yesterday. So there's probably some room for corrections. Seriously. Damn, that thing is tanky when your stats are terrible. So in normal mode, we should be basically killing them instantly. If I see an enemy kind of be a jerk to me like that, I'm just going to freeze trap or fire trap them. How far am I going to solo to? 80. Get rid of these. So we'll get kind of like a little bit of a flow to it. Wow, they move so slow in single player. I forgot about that. It's funny. There we go, that was the level up I was hoping for earlier. It's 
that's fine. Unfortunately, at low levels, we're going to whiff a little more than we would like to. Plus, these enemies start to be fairly resistant to us after a point. There we go, much better. Though it is a bit more awkward in single player than multiplayer, just to summon the pan arms. The other room, I don't see like a, a lot of issues with it, honestly. At least not at this difficulty. Wow, my character didn't turn around. That was really awkward. That's fine. I cannot rate I cannot wait for Ranger Wall Chat, you have no idea. We lost some time setting up our buttons, but I think it's mostly worth it. Downside is this up before. This room, the only thing is like sometimes they spawn pretty far away. I have to kind of stand in the corner here. But not like the deep corner. You can see we're already almost at 100 percent accuracy without freeze traps. We're not too far off from just obliterating everything. The problem is when stuff like that spawns behind me, it wastes time. It's a bit unfortunate. We can also buffer our specials if we want to. Just to land more of these consistently. For the most part, we should be one-shotting everything. Now that we have V502 out, Clear speed should be pretty defined. Speaking of which. You see we're almost at a 98% chance, and now we're just at the mercy of EDK. I think being able to determine when I should switch into Hellneedle will kind of improve the run a little bit. This is something I have to get a feel for. But definitely open to suggestions there. But definitely when it's just one enemy, there's no reason to not Hellneedle. Okay, so let's pick up some healing items for the future. I think we're basically capped on healing, which is good. I'm gonna be at that point. Yeah, pretty much. Standing around and feeding two mags at once. I was gonna say, my only response to that is only two mags. I think when I used to do it, I would do four or five. So that way I wouldn't have to do that again for other characters. Although, to be fair, I still have some unfinished mags. Yeah, you have two alts now, I think is the correct statement. <laughs> Yeah, I think, I, I think when I used to feed it, I did four or five at once. Ideally, I would probably feed so many mags that all I would be doing is feeding them over and over. By the time I'm done finishing feeding them, I have to feed the beginning again. Yeah, the way I saw it is that like I would, I would level a bunch of them. So I would have, for example, I'd start with the Ramar because I would want to give a Stella. So he would sit there and kind of help out. Oh, there are villains behind me. Oops. Yeah, so if I'm like watching a show, I'll do it. And that's why some of mine are unfinished, just because like I started streaming more heavily, so it's like I'm not really gonna have to find that time going forward. 
that Del Saber is such a jerk. He's spending the whole weekend feeding my mags. Um, I mean, that's just mag feeding. I don't know what to tell you. I was gonna say, I, even I have fed multiple mags at once. If you won, I could show the, uh, the unloved mags. I pretty much decided I don't feel like doing it anymore. So hopefully this helped me with that significantly. Oh, seriously? There we go. By the time my shot's correctly, I should ignore their little dodge move like that. <laughs> There's the super easy way to level mags. It's called pay somebody. <laughs> watch, watch as you magically save hours of your life. Oh, see, there we go. See, Prometheus Promethe and I know. We're like, listen. It makes sense if you're just, like, on the computer and you're watching shows. You just want to, like, you don't super care about timers. You're like, yeah, I'll just get a couple levels as I wait. Like, then it makes sense, right? Like, you're not in a rush for it. Uh, where is the thing for it? Is it here? Is it over here? We gotta find where this is eventually. I thought it was over near that wall, but maybe I don't have it done correctly. Let's learn in real time. This is the this is the part of the quest I should pay attention to more. Yeah, where is it? Hmm. Question mark chat. Oh, there it is. Now I see it. Okay, so we're gonna bring a cannon rouge next time. I wasn't sure, and then I then I saw it sticking out. So that that was my bad. Today we learned. Yeah, it's in a weird spot, so that's why I was like, it normally you look up for it. So I was like, is it in this I was looking up for the ceiling, but I was like, no, it's not that kind of uh that, that would just be too convenient. So what I'm going to end up doing is I should have a Cannon Rouge spare, or if I don't, I'm going to be very sad. Twenty PD for a level 200 dex mag? No, that's not true. And Promethean says they're like 4 to 5. Yeah, I would agree with that. Oh no, show up. Show up, help me. We have a cannon rouge to speed this up. If not, we'll just... Oh, there we go. Ooh, 200 accuracy needed. That's fine. You can make do. Is Seal suffering from no Gafoli? I Gafoli wouldn't hit that, I don't think. It's in the floor. Gafoli is also kind of whack for popping those in general. I don't even think things like kunai, which normally hunters would use to hit it, would be able to hit that. It's in a, it's in a very weird place compared to normal locations. Okay, so in a few more levels, I'll be able to cannon rouge freely, which will be nice. So I just have to get there. Yeah, mags are really not that expensive, especially during the event, too. You save up PDs. I mean, the odds of you getting, like, eight PDs during the event are, like, insanely high. And then you just get it. Welcome, Draken. Hope you're doing well. So from that standpoint, it's not that hard to get a mag. There's just a, You just have to reach out to the people that are actively doing it. I'll probably ask Hellcleave to assist with some of mine. 
I have a couple that I'm, like, very gradually fixing myself, but I'm not in a rush to, like, cap them. Only three PDs. Yeah, when you're an ultimate, it, that's usually... In a, in a day, we normally get, like, eight plus. Yeah, we'll switch our ID. Actually, I should switch... Actually, that's a good point. I should switch my ID now before we go further. Right now, it doesn't really matter. I don't want to accidentally get too far with it. Reset it real quick. Yeah, I don't plan on playing white ID Rocket Seal. Yeah, they're, they're pretty common. I mean, it, I think even in our, like, two and a half hours of playing, we ended up with four PDs. And that was uh, not an ultimate that we got that. <laughs> I'll keep saying some mag feeders take commission prices even. I was going to say. Is is that some mag mag feeder? Elkly? <laughs> Let's go into the extermination. Yeah, they're they're super common in ultimate. Oh, during the event? Oh yeah, no, I would not ask during the event. Yeah, we want to get some Jaya's later. I technically could have waited to 20 and then mod sec ID, but I'm like, you know what? In case I accidentally overlevel or something stupid, why don't we just change it now? Yeah, I'll probably feed help leave a few things to make it to Lysias. Help contribute towards his uh, funding of an LNK. It's just kind of win-win. So yeah, this character will potentially help other people level once she gets to 80. Oh, Hellcleave already has the funds. In a level 200 royal purple Agassia? I don't know what that means. Yeah, we'll help help Cleave out, I think, with some runs later. Oh, that enemy jumped at me like it was gonna do something. Oh, it's a mag name. Oh, that makes more sense. I'm gonna be honest with you, I have like five million Liberta wings. I think I've even given Hellcleave some. I'm like, listen, I am never gonna make this mag. I, I just don't want to. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've handed some to Hellcleave before. I've definitely handed dragon skills in abundance to Hellcleave. Yeah, I, I just don't care. I just want Nidra's. I'm gonna be real with you. Nidra's and Talesius. My my wants are simple. I'm like, all I care about is invincibility triggers. I don't care at all how the mag looks. Yep, exactly. See, Hellcleave named the exact reason why I will never get one. I'm like, listen, all I care about is that invince. Yeah, and I've been disappointed. I made Sato before I understood that Sato had a worse invincibility trigger than Nidra. So my Sato's are definitely a regret choice. Like, I know I made one, and it's on my force. And then I took a hand-me-down one. But it's like, mmm. Regrets. Yeah, Sado, Sado is literally just worse Nidra. Nidra gets invincibility plus, Sado doesn't. Which I wish I knew at the time. Because if you look at the old PSO forums, they don't talk about, like, the plus and minuses. I was like, oh. That really sucks. The people were putting it on equal level and one is just clearly better. The wiki for Affinia has since upgraded quite a bit and has explained that. But that was not really a thing when I was playing. There we 
go. I mostly just need to get the Cannon Rouge and then I'm good. New character looking fresh. Welcome, Remote Battery. This room is going to be awkward. I got to figure out a good spot to stand in for this and still hit everybody. These sorcerers teleporting is such a time waste. Super rude. Why did you teleport backwards while there were other targets? Del server, please. Like, right, Confused Trap was definitely a mistake there. They just wasted a ton of time. Yeah, this quest definitely feels more geared towards multiplayer. That's why I was kind of curious in trying it solo. Like, the XP grain, the gain is really good, but these are the kinds of rooms I was worried about, where I have to do a lot of movement. Where in multiplayer, only one person has to move. Even then, not that much. Oh, are you shooting the thing in the floor? It's super rude. Please don't. Let's see if that works. Really? That didn't trigger it? How close do you need to be with fire traps to trigger that? Wow, that really sucks. Well, today we learned that is really annoying to hit. Maybe I have to do it before I kill something? Or maybe you need two to three due to level? Maybe, uh... Because it felt like I put it, like, right on it. Wow, that, that actually took me four. That's gross. Actually gross. Just need to level. We need to get like one set of kills and then we're good. No wonder why I was second guessing myself. That thing was tanky. Alright, uh, we're slash lobbying. We're done here. Goodbye. Not contending with you today. Episode 2 is Force Hell and you hate it? Yeah. Uh, I think early parts of it are fun as Fomoral, but I generally don't like being forced. Unless it's that one tower quest, then I like it. Uh, the answer to that TTV pun is you melee. If you try only winning with tech damage, it's not happening. Listen, if the game wants to play itself here, listen. We'll let auto-aim do whatever it wants. No, you can't tech seabed. You should be using Hell or me good. And if it's a Del Beater, you can kind of get away with Gafoe. That's about it. Yeah. I trust me, TTV pun. I, I understand. I, I play a lot of forces. Trust me when I also say you need to Oh, there's a love rappy. I was wondering where we're gonna see a rare rappy. Well, let's get rid of you. Ah, oh, Brianok. Boo. Garbage. But yeah, it's more like yeah, you're you're not meant to spell cast at all in that quest. If you try to actually play with MST, it doesn't work. The only way you could play is Migid and Demons. And a little bit of ATP. Hilda Blue. One of them Hilda Gone. There we go.
I was gonna say, where are these rare enemies when we play episode four? <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. Oh yeah, Hellcleave, did you see? I think you were there earlier. We got the double mill lily and a single TTF. Like the one rank of lilies was two mill lilies. I think you were there. What are these? Rather silly. So right now our V502 is kind of outscaling the enemy totally. Uh, yeah, that's still a valid strategy. Fun. We compared, it's like pretty equivalent to CCC. It's like maybe 10 XP less per second. Yeah, we did that earlier. Like, literally, we did that at, like, in the morning. Speaking of which, I'm noticing some weird slowdown. Is Twitch playing? Oh, Twitch is playing on my browser. I was wondering what was happening. I was like, acting a little weird. Yeah, we did, uh, I mean, preferably we do MA4B in order to level new players, for example. Okay, he's just gonna be stubborn with me, that's fine. If he takes a swing at me, I could kill him, but if he just does that, there's nothing I could do. But we were observing that, like, Beyond the Horizon is about equivalent to CCC in experience. So, that was kind of our takeaway. Definitely, if you have two forces, we saw that, um... Uh, New mop-up Operation 3 is probably better than CCC. Just from the standpoint that you can do a lot more uh, stacking. And then it's a little easier to heal. But it also just depends on how many people you're rushing with, I guess. See, there we go. I wanted him to melee me like that last time. He's just like maybe one step out of range, which is sad. Yeah, I just want to have this as a comparison video. Like, I'm not going to claim myself to be, like, the master of CCC. Especially since I literally just started it. Uh, yesterday, I think. Since we don't usually play with hell weapons. Aside from hell ray gun. Reanok with 40 hit. Chat, that is so depressing. <laughs> Could you imagine if that was on Jaya, chat? How happy I would have been? No. Erect. Got him that time. Like, you don't have to trap him to hit him, it's just convenient. Like, I can hit him without trapping, just sometimes when they do stuff like this. You just go ahead and freeze him. <laughs> You're tired of messing around with this enemy. The hard mode is... I am surprised that didn't kill me. Hard mode is the start of the ridiculous Jaya's. Unlike normal mode, there's actually drops we're interested in here. It's just a shame that hit percentage went to uh, Brianok, of all things. We're gonna do this, since we just leveled. Really, he spawned on me. That's that sucks. I need to remember where the Del Savers are on this spawn. This is the room where I lose a lot of time. Alright, it's fire trap time. I'm mashing. There we go. Much better. No, don't you hit me. So yeah, we're just kind of doing some comparisons for other players, and also ourselves, because we should challenge ourselves to try new things. Okay, we'll probably let the quest time out, this should be fine. Hmm. 
You know what? That was a very fortunate series of hell. Yeah, see? Aw. Uh, yeah, you don't have people in the four corners. That's so sad. You lose time here. It's fine. We'll let it time out. Yeah, normally if you have four people there, they all rise. You get one shotgun shot to kill them. So it's interesting kind of experimenting between the two. Yeah, ideally we'll end up with a Jaya with extremely high hit. But I think on hard mode, it's like... I don't know if it's like 1%, 2%. Oh, yeah, I'll leave here. We're dealing with Mary Carol. Get out of here. I think I can start using the... And in Rugia. Well, that is more of a question for Hulk Leave. I'm assuming you can do it with three Mag Blasts. I just looked at its triggers and went, nope. I just didn't bother looking into it. There we go. That is a much cleaner clear. Maybe bottom left corner is the truth. Figured I'd try something different in that run. I like that I have a 100% chance to hit that. Thank you, Accuracy. When we go to uh, very hard mode, I'll go pick up a ranger wall. I could have probably put it in my inventory to save a little bit of time, but fine. Nice, nice, nice. So I guess we'll talk about the reason why this run is done. One, it's actually fairly fast with challenge weapons. Two, you could do it with just rangers. I do, I do think that one force, three rangers, looks like it's more optimal. I don't know if it's the most optimal. That's that that's more for people that hardcore grind it. But I, I felt we trimmed at least a minute from the run every time by having a force. This song is so good. This enemy right here in the corner is so rude. Is there a corner they don't spawn in? Maybe the upper left is where I need to be so that they're not like literally wedged against me. Mm -hmm. You completed the stage, all right. You can see I have like a 91% chance of landing a shot. This is before we get Ranger Wall, so it's going to be very devastating to them as it goes forward. I like whipping the first shot here just to make sure I hit with the second shot. Oh, I missed one enemy. <laughs> See, that's what I'm going to hell need over. There's just one enemy wasting my time like that. Speaking of which. I think I need to do little quick resets like that, just to save like a couple seconds. Yeah, generally speaking, most mags you can get three blasts on. I just don't recall the condition for them offhand. Oh, I could have uh, blasted the corner there. Yeah, this quest in multiplayer is pretty brain dead, I'm not gonna lie. Like, you barely move, and it's just like... Everybody picks their designated corner and they blow things up. Single player, you have to carry like a little more. Like, it's see, like I'm trying to hit the uh, sorcerers. 
to like maneuver out of the way for the other things. So you can see without any material usage and just this gun, it's good enough to do the run. Should have paused trick to go through faster. That was my bad. Yeah, some of these enemies are annoying. Speaking of annoying, I don't like them spawning behind me. Nice level up. What? Where are the pan arms? Oh, they just haven't popped up yet. I'm getting trolled, it's fine. Really? That'll save a lot of time. <laughs> That's already a massive improvement. Just having a cannon rouge there is actually critical. Yeah, like, look at the difference. When I had cannon rouge chat, I saved almost 50 seconds. Like, that, that alone should tell you that was a big time save in the run. Honestly, I hell needle these. Yeah, I would say I didn't really find a use for it in multiplayer, but in single player, I'm definitely using hell needle a lot more on some of these spawns. They're just awful. They're definitely meant for a multiplayer team, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just sometimes you want to do this. I'll kill you out of spite, not because it's useful. Goodbye, Mary Carol. Yeah, fortunately, since this is single player, I should survive all the hits, unlike multiplayer. Yeah, we're getting kind of a rhythm to it. It definitely is. I definitely do play this quest a lot differently in single player versus multi. So far, bottom left seems like the superior corner for the most part. The only downside is this one. I mean, look at this. Yeah, here's the I don't want to move that I was hoping to achieve. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, bottom, bottom left looking real good. So I just have one problem corner. I get like 20 waves in a row. I don't think there's a corner I can stand in for this one. I'll kill you real quick with that. Also soundtrack, please. I cannot believe I hit that enemy with a hell shot. I, I delayed the shot on purpose, don't get me wrong, but I'm surprised that actually worked without getting hit out of that. Maybe that's how you save time? You have to be like in a very specific position so it leans into your hell shot, but without hitting you. So, so far bottom left looking like my favorite spot so far to do this quest. I didn't like the bottom right because I would often not be in position. Yeah, if you saw it, like, tilted its head back and I shot it without needing to move. So there's, like, this little tile. So I have, like, a visual cue where to stand, too. It makes it even easier. And see, like, I don't even have to really move from here for the most part. Oh, uh, no hit on that Jaya. I 
I almost got it. Okay, I need to be one step back for that one. If I was one step back, that would have shot. Okay, let's go heal ourselves real quick. Yeah, that fell pretty fast. So two Jayas, none of them very useful, sadly. Hmm. I'm going to try this corner, see how I feel about it. I know eventually I have to shoot the other corner, which is fine if we get to that. Oh, I don't like how that left me with the wolf there. Is the Del Saber taking longer to reach me is a good thing. Okay. Okay. I mean, the longer they have to turn to fight me, the better. But aside from that first spawn, I'm liking this corner a bit more. I just lined up better. Also, that awkward moment when you want to shoot the wall, but you pick up items. <laughs> Whatever. You see how, like, none of them are facing me immediately? That helps me a lot in single player. And these enemies being here is not bad, because that means the Del Saber is not hitting me. So, still, like, in the corner so far. If I never get Del Saber, well, that sucks. By like something that spawns in the corner, I think I'm good. Oh, can arms. Yeah, there's no Tesla beer in this corner. Huh. That is much better. Oh, there is a Del Saber there, though. That's a bit sad. You know what? I'm just tired of you. There should be a wipe. I cannot wait for more freeze traps. Trap, please. Is there like a difference in the traps between difficulties? I feel like when I'm lo on low difficulties, the freeze trap just never activates. To do like the dumbest hits in into it to activate it. Hmm. This is unfortunate. Speed, yes, that would explain a lot. Because I'm trying to set up like I'm doing ultimate traps and it just like is legit not activating. What? Auto aim, please. You aimed at the thing in the wall before you aimed at the thing next to me? What? I feel like auto aim is trolling there, chat. I'm not gonna lie. Like that, that was actually ridiculous that it did that. I don't think that should be allowed. If the shot can't physically hit the target, I don't know why it auto-aimed to that. Actual shenanigans. Yeah, I think these waves just aren't worth doing. They're too slow. Multiplayer it makes sense to clean them up. Single player, not really. Okay, we're almost there. Go a little more to the right here.
don't like... Okay, I'm a little too close. I don't like how far to the right it was making me aim. This is a better angle. Yeah. Much better. There we go. Now auto-aim is behaving the way I wanted to. Right, chat? I wanted to just, like, very slightly slide. So basically, my feet is touching what I'll call the home plate. I'm mostly in the right position. Game, please. Nice. Need to just move a little bit there. Yeah, if all I have to do is do, like, the tiniest of steps, I think I'm okay with this. I think this is definitely my favorite corner to be in. It just seems to be in the right position in, like, all but, like, two waves. Whereas, like, the bottom right, I felt like I just couldn't quite hit certain targets. I feel like I've been rewarded heavily for going here. See how it just lined up for the third shot? I didn't have to move. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I almost landed the shot. That was so... I was slightly too slow. That would have worked. It did attack into it. I just missed. So sad. Well, like, the game was being a little goofy there. It's like, green targeting indicator. You can hit it, and then it didn't. Indicator lied to me, chat. Game, please. Yeah, I could kill that first wave and then get into position here, I think, is the play. Because it lets me do this to the Del Saber. Which is pretty huge. If the Del Saber doesn't just walk at me, it's not doing its dodge animation, so it dies. I'm kind of liking this. Like, see how I just double tapped? I remember when I was in the starting position, I couldn't hit that other wolf. Yeah, there we go. See, we're seeing some consistency with the clears. The only downside is I have to move a little bit here. There we go. I knew auto-aim would kill him eventually. What? There we go. Seriously? Listen, sometimes it just doesn't want to do the actual attack. Whatever. I hate this enemy. Just sometimes it's like, no, no, no. Even though I can definitely hit you with my max range, I'm just going to choose not to attack. What a troll. Welcome, Sir Frosty. There we go. This is the problem enemy right here. I need to figure out when to leave that wave so I don't get attacked, because that'll be a problem on higher difficulties. You gotta be kidding me. Spread needle, please. Hopefully everybody's doing well. 
Almost out of uh, hard mode. Sadly, though, my power button is on the wrong... So I need to actually move that going forward. I don't like having power attack on confirm, especially when I'm playing ranger, because they're going to be doing a lot of uh, power attacks. And the downside to that is that you will end up picking up items instead of attacking. That leads to awkward moments like what happened before, where I couldn't shoot the stupid uh, enemy. I want this here. I also just do this if I oh I can't do both. That's bad. Disregard. Uh this is kind of worth doing. Pretty quick. This not so much. So we'll do a little time check at level 40 just to give ourselves an idea of where we uh are with the clear. Cause if we're if we're like pretty far behind at level 40, I'll just call it, and then if people need levels, we'll just continue with this character. So if there's other characters people need leveled in very hard mode or whatever, she'll do what she needs to do. I mostly wanted to establish a baseline, because we saw for the most part if it was like a 40 40 levels should be in about 40 minutes and in like a really good run. So if we're at like 55 minutes or whatever, then we just call it. It's that, it's that simple. So I do feel like it's taking a while, and some of it was me getting used to the system, but you know, it is what it is. So yeah, let me know, chat, if you need somebody to get leveled. So I'll literally just continue to run, run the run with this character, and I'll, I'll close the self-challenge. I mostly just want to have this as a comparison, where I feel like this is about as fair as it's going to get from 1 to 40. So I could get an idea of, like, the impact of multiplayer, because I feel like if I only do, like, one level, like, normal, I don't think that's good enough of a test for us to check. Oops. Bad. But then going forward, we'll know. Might want to do, like, a little, a little taste of very hard mode, but that'll be about it solo. I could get an understanding of like the pros and cons of single player versus multiplayer. I will say for the most part, I'm missing basically zero shots. It's just all down to EDK. Though to be fair, EDK tends to not vary too much between single and multi. Uh, with exceptions being definitely seabed. So I'm not interested in doing seabed anyway. I'm not sure, for example, how Cleaver Promethean, if you need assistance leveling. Just let me know. We'll do a little time check here, and that will determine things. But I am think I'm learning more about the quest by playing it solo. See, there we go. That was a nice no-move hell. But sadly, auto-aim pulled me away from the thing that was closer to me. Really? That was a lot of whiff DDK. Welcome back, Promethean. I was asking Promethean, did you need a character to get leveled or something? I'm going to do a time check when we hit level 40 to get an idea. Yeah, that is definitely faster here. Level 59, perfect. So potentially if I am pretty far behind my target goal, then that's fine. We'll just switch back to uh, multiplayer. I just want to make sure that we, we say we gave it a shot. We learned a little bit from our mistakes. We saw Cannon Rouge was needed to speed up the run. Like these are important things to kind of denote. Because some of it was done kind of like in the corner of my stream. So bringing it to the forefront. It's like something that's mandatory versus not mandatory is kind of big.
feel like I saw Brick yesterday for an Uber hunt. I wonder if they're just grinding it all day. Oops. Not where I thought the enemy was for a second. Yeah, it definitely feels slower. I'm just curious how much slower. Game, please. Did you seriously pick up an item? I got trolled. I dropped my combo. So sad. I roll my eyes when that happens. I hate that so much, chat. If there was an option to disable, uh, what's it called? Pick up on the confirm button, I would love that. <laughs> that would be my quality of life feature. I would rather have a designated button for that, for sure. It's kind of annoying that it hijacks like a very crucial button if you're playing on controller. So sad. Like, I almost never want to pick up an item with confirm when I press it. Almost never. Like, when it's choosing between an item or attacking, it should just let me shoot. Move it to the chat button. Yeah. Just like literally anything else on the controller would be really nice. Because there's so many times I have to like rearrange depending on like what character I'm playing. Like what button is not useless. And the problem is like when you hit control, it still picks up items in that scenario. So it just eats two of your buttons. So it feels kind of bad. I've never liked that. Oh well. Uh, this is not Etrian Odyssey 4. It could technically be remixed from there. Since most of Etrian Mystery Dungeon was from other games. Yeah, they have their own version of, like, the Etrian Odyssey 3 music, for example. But pretty close. This is, uh, Etrian Mystery Dungeon. I, I would have accepted that, because I know, I know it has a mix of songs from each game. The song specifically is One Step From Death. I'll try like a little bit of very hard after this, but yeah, I feel like I'll do some group play after this. I just wanted, I wanted to test this because it's very rare I get the opportunity to play with this kind of weapon, let alone like do it on stream and see in real time how I feel about some of the positions. And again, like, am I going to be the master of the quest? Hell no. But I just want to see from like just a couple runs what I learned from the quest. There we go. See that? That's what I wanted. That feels like what you're supposed to do. My foot was touching the plate, and I was able to shoot the enemy behind me. I think that's how you're supposed to do that, by the way. If it's not, then I just found, like, the magic angle. Because normally you get bonked by that if you don't move. Yeah, def okay, so we just leveled. So let's actually the game. Check time. Alright. So if we're like really far off, then that's fine. We'll just switch to multiplayer in a moment. For people that need to go to very hard to ultimate, we'll help level. Yeah, too slow. Okay. So, Chan, if you need some characters to get some levels, now is the time. I believe Promethean was interested in hopping in, help we've offered. But if there's anybody else that needs a little bit of a boost, let me know. Jarfrosty says, have you cast in the 70s? Sure, we could boost that character. Hmm. 
Am I good to stop by for the Agasta Maxell? Do you mean me? I wasn't offering to give it away. That's what the question is. I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. I give him the health leave as part of trades. <laughs> he gets those and the crappy wings and things like that or whatever the components are. I'm like, be free, health leave. Enjoy the mag cells. Yeah, I keep like one or two frames on me at all times. Or not frames, uh, cells. So technically I always have them, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and advance. So I'm going to give up on the, the, the self challenge. So we saw multiplayer does help, which makes sense because there's like four hell. So even if accuracy is a problem, you have four people potentially doing it. I'm going to go ahead and move it into very hard. For people that want to continue forward. I'm one level away from Ranger Wall. It's so sad. Come to me, Ranger Wall. I need you. Oh, Cleave is here. So you can hop in, Sir Frosty and Promethean. We're gonna level your characters. Challenge over. I could technically wear S parts. I guess that's technically what I should do. I guess in the future, if you have S parts, you could technically wear it before Ranger Wall for more accuracy. Technically. Oh, Cleave with a solid 196. There we go. So in theory, I could wear it. I mean, it's good. It's just, it's more useful for hunters. Oh, I'm like Hellcleave sized. Look at that. Actually, I think Hellcleave might be slightly taller than me. Change my mind. I actually don't need to put anything in the bank. Other than the double heavenlies. Okay. Let's proceed. Yeah, I do think that V101 helps a little bit here, just because I do actually need that, like, 1.5 accuracy. for the poor and hungry, oh no. I would say post-event we'll do some cookie stuff. Right now I don't feel like it. Okay, I've learned the truth is over here. Jaya. There we go. Look at the speed of the clear. Rare Lily. Get out of here, Nar Lily. Oh, I'm not gonna lie. This is one of my favorite songs in the game.
I had a lot of fun playing this. Maybe we'll go back to Etrian at some point. We did play that on stream. I did a uh, mostly really tight Etrian Odyssey Untold run. Where I, I, I did not really grind at all or backtrack in dungeons other than to do side quests. And even then, we uh, it's a very interesting charges through. Rip Hell Cleaves uh, Paralysis. That was probably the only game that I can play that way, where I was literally manipulating the AI. That's that's the only game I feel like I know very well in the series. Like, we had things where, like, I, I was moving the Epoes at a certain way to keep them out of the boss battles. And also manipulating so that I did a certain amount of damage to not trigger certain phases and to use it to skip other attacks. So that, that was pretty thorough AI manipulation. I felt in that particular run. So I don't think I did too bad. Yeah, I, I got some like safety levels doing side quests, but that was about it. Ooh, so sad. Like two ja three Jayas with no hit. I'm going in the corner. I already know I like this angle better. Uh, it keeps getting knocked down. That's so sad. Lots of second one finding. Jaius. I'll preemptively come in the corner. If you want to farm a psycho wand, we might do that later. I'm willing to humor chat on a few runs. I do like actually soloing purple caves, but it doesn't really work in multiplayer due to the elemental resist changes, which I will say, I really don't like that that's a thing. Yeah. Because you have to view it this way, like rare enemies getting the bonus on top of the other enemies' rare chance going up is actually pretty huge. Like, that's why Rambling Maze is, like, so common. Like, when we ran it, we got, like, eight Rambling Maze. There's, like, no other time we would play, and we would get eight Rambling Maze. Like, we were lucky to see a Rambling Maze in, like, three hours. Meanwhile, we got, like, legit five or six in a row. Like, that that's what the thing is, because you're dealing with a one in two and a one in 500. And if both of them have double odds, then it's not that rare. <laughs> but, you know potentially could be exploited. So in theory, you could end up with like a million frozen shooters if you really wanted to. Because you have to think about it. You have a se basically a 75% chance of hitting it, plus you have a 250 rare chance? Actually, I forget how the rare chance multiplies. I'm thinking about it. Now I'm feeling less sure. I imagine it would be like 1.5 over 500 would be the thing. Ooh, you failed the Taurus. That's so sad. Oh no, leave me alone. Hi, where's the silver badge? There's so many things I just dropped in the last second. No. Yes. Yes. There we go. So yeah, you, you saw in solo play, I did get like a minute 30 in my best attempt. Yeah, it's definitely much faster with the group. It's 
So many Jaya. Hell yeah, there's a lot of Jaya. There's approximately four chances per area of getting them. So on this difficulty, it should be pretty common. That's why I'm thinking if people wanted to hit Jaya, it's not like the most impossible thing ever while leveling. That's not a bad quest for getting both. Well, I love each justice. Probably like my third favorite song on the soundtrack. I think Chalky Woods, hands down, is my favorite song. It's too good. Wow, Chat just actually murdered it. Let's level up. Stats matter. Get out of here, monkeys. I still can't believe when I did the Etrian Odyssey one playthrough how well that final boss went. There's so many things that could go wrong in that boss fight. We got lucky twice, I think, with the RNG and did not get a, a single, like, hard wipe. That was just first try. I was really surprised we got the manipulation. Damn, that, uh, <laughs> that X-Cal means business. Goodbye. wondering where the enemy was. I wondered no longer. Photon drop, huh? Wait, where is it? Don't bait me like this. Where's the photon drop? There we go. Kill me. Gladly take that escape doll, no question. out of position. I wanted to shoot him with the shot. So sad. Ooh, he's kind of annoying to hit. There we go. Oh, speaking of which. Let's improve our accuracy so he's a little less annoying to hit. Much better. Now we have a 93% chance of landing that shot. Oh, if he gets hit by that, I can't hit him. There we go. Ended the hell. Oops. Yeah, I had a feeling I couldn't survive that multi. My health is just too low. So I think I'll abstain from going this far again. So I just can't do anything in this fight. I'm dead. Yeah. I'm going to let the timer time out here. And then I'm not going to go this far again. There we go. 
piece. Can scrap the other item. Say the normal game clear music. There we go. Nice and simple clears. Oh, he's untargetable. So sad. Yeah. I think that's why I kind of gave up on Robarda for stunlocking. Just when it freezes in a way that you can't hit it, it's like, wow. It's got to stay out there and stare at it. So awkward. Level up. Gaia with 20 hit. Not quite what I'm looking for though. Oh, uh, if I was like one step over to the left, that would have worked. He would have walked in front of me. Nice and simple clears. That's what we'd like to see. Yeah, see how when I hit control here, it picks up? I wish that didn't exist. At minimum, I wish there is an option to toggle it. If control always stopped you from picking up, I would love that so much. Okay, now this is my favorite song in the game. but the hit percentage is terrible. Forty hit, nice. There we go. I really need to pick up more trimates. I'm actually lowish. Yeah. I used half of them already. Although to be fair, if we're not going to C bed, I won't need it as much. I was gonna say, I, I, I could do almost anything all day long listening to the Etrian Mystery Dungeon soundtrack. I think it is genuinely my favorite soundtrack of all time. Just start to finish, I think I like almost every single song. The only thing that kind of comes close to me, or for me, is uh, Orochi 3. Just because it's all action songs. With like very few exceptions. And it's from all the Dynasty Warrior games that I like. Like, that's about it. Uh, I guess close contenders might be some Streets of Rage soundtracks. Because I like all the songs, but they don't have the sheer volume. 
that some of the modern soundtracks do. That's so like for me, I gotta deduct some points. It's one thing to have like 12 or 15 really good songs out of a 15 song soundtrack, but it's also another to have like a 70 song soundtrack at 60 or 65 being amazing. So sometimes the percentages don't really matter. I would really love where those materials are. Wow, I missed that many hells. That is so sad. That is actually sad. Oops, some materials. What the power material is looking for? Like five bajillion rares of questionable slash dubious value. Another power material. There's still one more in the room. I have no idea where it is. There's too many dots. Not usually a problem, but anniversary quest. A 15 hit total, Jaya. A bit sad. Bronze bat. Oh my gosh, so many drops. Is that the bronze badge? It is. So many enemies, chat. Who's that leveled? Is this where the power material is? Thank you, yellow dot. See, if I was not playing with minimap dots, I would not find that. I was having a conversation with somebody on YouTube, and I was like, listen, if they don't want to use the dots, you know, that's up to them. But, like, honestly, good luck finding that one power material we just had in that mess of things without the mini map dots. I don't know what you would do other than just give up the material. Because it's one thing if it's, like, a red item, right? Like, that's kind of whatever. But that that's automatic. You don't, you don't even put that in the mini map. But I could not imagine wanting to find trimates or healing items in that mess. In like any kind of timely fashion. I am slash lobbying. I'm not dealing with this. No thanks. The peace out on Miracle. Not worth the time. New game. Got some items while I wait. Mr. Rogers says, I got a few bronze badges. I don't know what to do with them. Uh, it depends on how far you are in the game, but generally speaking, the meta of, like, late game is that they're mostly just add slot fodder. Or, potentially, you could use them for bronze slot gambling. So if you're very new to the game, you're very unlikely to have a lot of god units, for example. Or, potentially don't have something like a three seals on a force. So I would recommend that you check over the gamble list for the anniversary and see if those things are just easy improvements over what you have. And if you have like literally no rare weapons at all, like you're just on hard mode or very hard mode, uh, you would be surprised. You might get some value. I'm not going to guarantee you get value from it, but just be aware that uh, it, it could potentially speed up your runs significantly. I think you mentioned before you were playing Hue Cast. There's some okay items in there. You'll see a lot of people go between things like that and something known as the uh, Korin's Shop, uh, which you can find in the main Aphinia site, which says that uh, during each day there's a rotation of 1,000 gambles. So you could, for example, go into normal mode or the multiplayer mode and decide to talk to the additional NPC that's near the shops and pay 1k and potentially get a really strong item. You'll see people do that for three seals a lot, but it's also not bad for collecting a lot of cure units. There we go, now the team's all gathered. So it's hard to tell. I would say, given that you're pretty new, it might make sense to gamble with the bronze badges. It technically can give really rare chance of super good items that are still relevant for all characters. Is that a 35 hit Jaya? I should probably pick that up. Yeah, it is. So, for example, there's the, uh, what's it called? S Parts 2.01. Chat can correct me if I'm wrong. I always forget the numbers. But there's the shield that specifically Cass can wear that is like a super recommended must have for like very easy leveling with you, Cass. 
And you could just in, uh, just get it on your first try. If you're really lucky, you'll get it in like one bronze badge gamble. That thing grants you, for your reference, 15 accuracy, which means your first normal hit is 15%. And then that 15% scales with every single subsequent hit. As a reminder, you're generally going from, you can see, you go from 88% chance of landing special to 188. So that effectively turns into, from just special attacks, 30% more accuracy at landing your hit. So that's kind of huge. Oh, I'm loving this corner so much, yeah. This quarter is like the game changer for me. I don't even want to do the quest anywhere other than this quarter. It's so good. So yeah, I just got another potential of Jaya to give to new players. I mostly had 30 hit ones. There's nothing like inherently wrong with giving a 30 hit away. Uh, but 35 hit is uh, really nice for Hugh Seal. It goes from like just barely usable to like actually decent. It unfortunately came with machine, but whatever. But let us know, Mr. Rogers, if you have any other questions. There's a lot of people with uh, arguably more game knowledge than me that are attending the stream. I'm sure they'll make comments as needed. <laughs> Some of them will be like, <laughs> they'll call me out and it'll be funny. They'll be like, no streamer. Well, actually. And that's fine. We all gotta learn. Grab some of these. The lack of three inventory slots is hard to manage. I didn't think they counted towards your inventory size. Do they? I've never paid attention. And asking, isn't machine good for vault off phase two or does it outreach all of its parts? Um... Generally speaking, you're going to use Diska of Brave Man because it hits all parts, and Diska of Brave Man is broken. You could, in theory, use Jaya on the boss. I probably wouldn't recommend it, unless it rolled, like, ultra crazy. Yeah, I, I thought they didn't. Remote Battery saying they don't either. Would Brave Man plus 13 be especially viable? Oh, no, no worries, no worries, we're Uh, 13, the armor plus Brave Man is absolutely meta and is considered basically one of the best combos you could do with Hunters. Like, we, we've used it on stream, it is absolutely game-breakingly broken on Hugh in particular. And it's otherwise probably most people's best-in-slot armor just due to how strong that interaction is between the uh, two of them. So for those that aren't aware, uh, 13 I think adds 30 ATA and 30% base weapon ATP for Disco Brave Man. Chat can correct me on those exact numbers. Um, and the reason this is important is because Hughcast only cares about accuracy. They're treating every item as something with 30% more accuracy is insane. Oh, it's 50%? Nice. So it's, is, I think it's 30 ATA, 50% base weapon, which is fine. How oh, am I not landing these hits, game, please? <laughs> I switched to Hell Needle. That was just getting ridiculous. But in either case, you don't actually super care about the base ATP of the weapon increase. Like, it's a nice extra, and that makes it more viable on, let's say, like, forces who lack a really strong base stat line, and it also fixes their accuracy problem. So don't be surprised to see that on a lot of forces as well. In particular, things like Fomar or Fomaral. They just go wee, just go, go wee, it just kills everything. Yeah, it's, it's super, super meta. We have a couple of guides talking about uh, really powerful combos. That That's one of the ones we super recommend. Really? I whiffed so many times. Profound sadness, chat. There we go. Hell Needle finally did him in. Like, how dare you, game, make me Hell Needle? I 
I was gonna say, if Hellcleave just stacks Skafoe, I think it just basically kills the Del Sabres and Pan Arms for me. I don't have to try very hard. Get rid of them. And I'm not gonna say no to something that kills sorcerers for sure. Ooh, try me. I'm on one of those. Be good. I don't want you. Did he refoe me? I was like, well, I was so far from him. How did he hit me? Actual madness. Yeah, Disco Brain Man is one of the best items in the game. Uh, I've temporarily categorized it as something known as the Common Three. There are three items that are surprisingly easy to get across multiple difficulties. That if they roll with any decent hit percentage, they're probably end game. That would be your Jaya's, your Vices, and Disco Brain Man, just to, due to how broken they are. And retreat out of lobby. I still think there are stronger weapons. And I call those, I guess for lack of a better term, the power six. So if you start playing with the power six, they are usually so strong that they are absolutely run-defining to have a basically any stat line. You know, your things like your lame to Argent, your Excalibur, your Cannon Rouge, things of that nature. Like those weapons just by existing warp your run and enable you to do a lot more things. There's some that like almost qualify, but they're they're usually a bit too niche for people to use. Also, identification, please. Please give me the 35 hit. Thank you. Yeah, a lot of the uh, endgame ultimate runs are shaped around getting those items easily. 13 is kind of interesting in the sense that you can actually get it from a lot of box drops, which I'm not sure how many people know without checking the drops and boxes. So you don't need to specifically be white ID. Yeah, 13 is really, really good. Highly recommend. But Disco Brave Man is uh, also really good. It's to the point people will do like endless runs just to see one with like a 50 hit or above. It's also one of the th those things that's so common. It's you're not really gonna get a lot of value if you trade like a zero hitter. You're gonna get like not even PDs in some scenarios. But the moment you start getting close to like 55, 60 hit, you're like, oh, do you just want 300 PDs or more for it? And you're like, oh. It's just, it's just literally a common drop for me. Another 25 hit Jaya. Sadly. Looking for a little stronger now. How did that miss him? Game, please. PDK, please. Yeah, I think we were all in the chat, I think, when uh, the lame dropped. Yeah, tech's up to 95. I think it was Divs in our group that shared the image first. I don't have the Discord open right at this moment. Damn, Gafoe stacking is so BS. We'll, we'll loan Hellcleave potentially a magical piece. Just let him, let him stack that Gafoe eternally. <laughs> it's so dumb. I was going to say, I think the server would openly weep if it got mistecked. They're like, hold on, let, let's make it a 75. Just game over. More custom barriers I don't care about. I 
It's nice to see that it was from the new uh, Sky ID drop. Nice level up. Yeah, we're getting a lot of Jaya's, but most of them are kind of mid-range. We're open for like a crazy 60 hit or something. Like that would be a massive upgrade for most people. So it, it, it is possible. We have so many Jaya's. You just have to get lucky on the roll. Promethean talking about top five Yashminika. But are you top five cookie owner? <laughs> These things out of here. Oh, I didn't auto aim to correct itself. That's so sad. Don't make me actually try. I don't want to do that. I like my little corner. If someone has more cookies, I'm gonna cry. Oh no. Damn, that 1k on the Del Saber seemed a little personal. Sorcerer's a big troll. Yeah, I think I found from fighting the Sorcerer, I think just Kapoe stacking was just so much stronger than Rebarda. I don't know what their weakness is supposed to be. But all I know is that when they teleport, they have to eat every stack Kapoe, so they just die. <laughs> just like, I'm like, listen, if they want to teleport around, I'd be like, fine. Enjoy your brief existence in uh, non-determinal space and die. Just perish. Two hundred cookies? I don't know if it was that many. I feel like a hundred and twenty is probably accurate. I don't think I ever got like a sack of ninety-nine. I could be mistaken. Get rid of these. There we go, nice and simple. I had a good old stack of 50 for sure, and then I think I had another stack of 30 or 40. Unless that other one was like 90, as I said before. I don't think I burned through 99 that quickly. I had some cookies of my own that made it that high. Yeah. Maybe the first stack could have been 99. But I know you didn't give me another 99 because that would have capped me. And I wouldn't have been able to put them in the bank. I think it was like a 50. I think 150 is more accurate. But it is a lot. I did think about it. It was like, how many times did I receive individual cookie drops? Unless there's like a third time, I don't remember. There was the, definitely the initial bulk. And then I still have like 40 of those. So we'll give them out eventually. Help people power level. Although sadly, the Jaya is just not uh, being kind to us today. We'll get there eventually. And probably in like another hour or so, we'll be done leveling this character. a streamer. I feel like that's not true, but honestly, I really don't look at how other people stream. So 
I don't I don't think I could name any videos that streams other than Hellcleave. I saw Hellcleave stream once, so I can put Hellcleave there. And then uh And Google Bonker might be one of the only other ones I know. Maybe Cyteal. I I don't know if anybody else has a video, to be honest. Oh, that's true. Pasta Punk does it. I haven't checked out their videos, though. I feel kind of bad. Somebody mentioned Section Skyly, but I, I need to probably see who they are a bit more. I think they raided the other day. Yeah, imagine the time attack people or the people that do, like, the fresh runs from 1 to 80. Have a pretty big following. rid of these. Four enemies. Hmm. Yeah, sadly nothing of interest dropped there. Uh, well, actually I forgot somebody oh, important. Tiggy. We forgot Tiggy. <laughs> I know Tiggy streams. I've caught several Tiggy streams. I try to help him out when I'm available. Thank you, uh, Pun, for the follow. I gotta get a little better at that. I tend not to, like, raid into other people. I, I, cause again, I just generally don't know who streams. If I saw Hellcleave is on, I'd be like, we're raiding Hellcleave. Give them all your LNK38 combats. these a happy little freeze trap down oh no they're frozen in a way I can't hit them Kind of funny that Hellcleaf says that. I think I got almost literally the same LNK on my Ucast. I think it's 30, 30 hit, 20 dark or something. Oh, those are the magic words for Hellcleaf. I would say definitely. He is definitely looking for a 60 hit. Rid of these. Funny thing, if we have a spare LNK. A zero hit? I probably do. I'll double check. I might have moved him out of my share bank though, so I, I probably can't give it to you like literally right this second. But if you just want it for like a, a all zero, I probably have one. Because I, I know my um Pass upgraded, so whatever they were using previously would be available. Yeah, before he hit that sister of the bank, oof. No love. Yeah, I, I don't have the PDs to compete with the people that actively trade. Not that I intend to compete there. You're too brave, man, so your thrum have hit. I would say for the most part, it's not too bad, Pun. You'll, you'll get there eventually. It's something like, you'll get a lot of easy ones, but it, it takes a little bit of time. To get one with hit percentage is kind of like going for like a more standard rare you have to think that it becomes increasingly unlikely you will roll high hit on something. So it's kind of just like getting a more rare version of a rare. As opposed to just it being ultra common, which it is in most of the uh, difficulties.
Yeah, I think uh, buh, 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 we do. I think there is white ID hunts. I have to check sure to make sure my section ID section actually talks about Disco Rayman hunts, because there are several good ones you could do in like CCA, for example. But it's usually just kind of like a, we'll say like supplemental rare. Like you'll be playing Red ID randomly and just get a Brave Man while just doing your normal things. Makes sense. Yeah, we end up getting quite a few just playing uh, classic Heaven Striker resets on episode 4. I forget what enemies drop it in TTL fuff hand. Normally Red ID, I think, uh, Rare Slime Lava Scannon. That's where my brain goes with Red ID. I don't think about anything else that's on that ID when I play TTL. But I think it could probably technically get a Disco Brain Man somewhere. White ID can be similar, where they might end up with some episode 2 drops with it. So whether all that is on ultimate or not really just depends on the ID. I'm gonna go ahead and lobby out of that one. Yeah, red ID we love, love, love for uh, TTF in episode four. It took two years to get it. Wow, that's a long grind. I don't think my grind was that intense for it. I'm double checking to see where they get Disco Brain Man on Red ID. Other than episode 4. Yeah, they get one from Temple Run. They get classic Spread Needle in Ruins, which is nice. Do they not get a Disco Brain Man in Common Runs here? That's a little disappointing. They get it from Bartles at GTF, but that's about it. A little disappointing. scenario. Oh, there we go. It's like, wait a minute. I was checking something. My bad. Uh, let's go in this corner. Yeah, White ID gets uh, quite a bit more throughout, but it, it is just kind of a nice value hunt for ultimate Red ID. Not every area has it, but there's enough. So it'll be something I would recommend you don't like hard focus on. But kind of look at the rares that are around the Disco Brave Man. Like, are you looking for female items, and you're looking for potentially some buffs in Temple? Are you more just looking for Heaven Striker on Red ID? Although, if you're doing that hunt for Heaven Striker as Humar, you taking two years for that now makes sense. I hope you weren't playing Humar Episode 4, that sounds horrible. Thirty hit giant, nice. Oh, good, good. It was phone Newman. I just wanted to make sure. <laughs> I'm like, I partially saw the text. There we go. Oh, phone Newman is so fun. Love phone Newman in episode four. It's a shame that red is really good up until you get to the bosses, and it's like, uh. I'm not really like super excited over heavenly ability versus centurion. Yeah, Gafoe stacks are super powerful in most episode 4 runs, and then Rafoe works on runs where they're spread out. If you're doing like new mop up Operation 3 where enemies are kind of spread out, Rafoe makes a lot of sense. But then you go to play something like, <laughs> I don't know, like your Christmas fiasco or something, where a lot of the waves are all centralized and you Gafoe stack. It's so disgusting how good it is. 
the Hulk Cleave here is doing the Gathoe stack. But basically, enemies will just spawn dead because they don't spawn with invulnerability to damage. So he leaves those lingering hitboxes to instantly delete them. It saves a lot of time. Hopefully you can similarly do it to the wolves in forest, or in this case, spaceship. They just don't have any immunity buffer. Similarly, when sorcerers teleport in in spaceship, they also don't have that immunity buffer, so they can also just explode. Similarly, Del Sabers also take a bazillion damage, even though it's not their weakness. So they end up getting pretty wounded. You see how these sorcerers are basically near dead already, and we haven't done anything? Thank you, Kofoe's tax. I'm trying to recall the mission that you ten that had you going into Subterranean Desert 2. Uh, there's a few that do that. I don't think that limits it down for me. There's like Massive Attack 1C, but that's like more than one Gertabulu. There's a couple of, uh, there's Cookie Quests, technically, yes. But there's also, I always get confused if it's Sweep Up or Mop Up operations, but basically all of those have a Gertabulu, if they're within a certain uh, floor. There's a couple that I think have just one, so it could be a sweep up. Usually I prefer not to do those quests, honestly, for Gertabulu. I wait for the Christmas event, and then I play Viridian or whatever. And I go for Excalibur on the surface, Limiter Underground. Deltaber. A War of Limits quest, interesting. Yeah, we, we tend not to run like a whole bunch of episode 4 quests. The problem is, is that there's some that are just really clearly better than others, and it's just like no contest. We just don't bother playing them anymore. Sort of like we don't really enjoy doing War Limits 1 and 2, even though they're like theoretically decent. Just because they have like really, really long walks in them that are just not worth the time. Ooh, yeah, I would not recommend War Limit 4 for Heaven Striker, to be honest. Uh, I would definitely have recommended just doing. Uh. New mop up operation two or three. All the uh, pyrogorons are more condensed than the beginning of the quest. There's a lot of popular resets for it. So that way you don't have to fight a Guru Bulu. Don't want to do that while you're hunting those. I think the wiki has been updated. Like, again, originally this wasn't in the wiki, but as of like two and a half, three years ago, I think they added it. Uh, they have the recommended quest for item. So they have the uh, the breakdown for uh, where the resets are. Like if you do first room versus like full quest. They say Gear Proof, though. Which ones? The new mop up quests? They're pretty busted. I, I think they're probably the highest value quests in the game, to be honest. The only thing that even competes with it at all is Terrell's Ego White ID. That's like the only time I have to think about which is more value per second. Those quests are just on their own tier. <laughs> as long as they exist, they will be quote unquote the best. have a high level force with us now like i am done leveling oh i'm sorry i think i said two and three i meant three and four
<clears throat> the reason being is that, like, the the fourth one, you can kill, like, six enemies and basically uh, reset the quest. Or if you just want a full clear, it's still faster than doing new mop-up Operation 3. The difference being new mop-up Operation 3 is also a lot of XP. It just can be kind of annoying to juggle constantly losing health. So between the placement of enemies and some of the longer walks in 3, uh, 4 will generally edge it out a little bit. But I think it's open to debate which one is technically better. Otherwise, I guess if you do... If you do Christmas Fiasco, I guess that's okay. Remember that quest does have a lot of Pyrogorons. I just don't think it takes advantage of the Gurdabulu at the end of the quest. So it makes sense if you're looking for, like, Red Surface Cannon Rouge plus doing your standard hunts. I just don't think, sadly, the Christmas quest benefits uh, that particular hunt. It's something you could do, it just won't be the best, if that makes sense. Get rid of these. Yeah, like, to give an idea offhand, I want to say War Limits 4 has... Somewhere in the mid-30s for drops. But I know for a fact that new mop operation 4 is 40. And 3 technically is 55 if you clear the quest. So it's still like more Pyrogorons per quest. I was like literally just writing about this in the section ID guide like two days ago. But, like some of it is fresh in my head for once. <laughs> Usually it's not. Yeah, I remember it was, uh... Oh, I feel bad. Why don't I remember the person's name? They have the Snoopy icon. They they put together a list of the enemy hunts early on, and since then they've been migrated to the wiki. That was back in, like, 2020? I think it was Spuzz. I think it was Spuzz. Thank you. Indeed, Sir Frosty. So I remember they had a, a full thread on that, because I remember looking at that when I was beginning, because I was like, what are the best quests? So definitely shout out to Spuzz, putting together all that info. Like, it was used almost verbatim in some places across the things. You still see the archive version of that thread. Yeah, they put a lot of time in it. It really counted out, which I thought was nice. And since then, like, I don't really think the wiki has updated too, too much for recommendations. I'm not going to say it hasn't, but a lot of those ones you see in the thread there are basically untouched. Nice level up. That Del Saber just got actually melted. Yeah, look at that Sorcerer HP. Thank you. Thank you so much for stacking a week. <laughs> Thank you. Please, please continue Sakafoe. I hate these enemies. <laughs> Let them burn, chat. I'll deal with everything that you can't burn out. And that'll be our little deal. Yeah, there we go. Like, these robots, who cares? Just always be Gafoe stacking. Oh, they blocked my shot. That was rude. Yeah, see how these wolves even explode? Even the Delta Sabers melt. Look at them. They're supposed to have 80 fire resist. You wouldn't be able to tell based on how much damage they take. They just get actually wrecked. There you go. The power of twin Gafoe compels you. Oh, thank you for killing the sorcerers. Those are so annoying for hell users. I hate them. <laughs> they know what they did, chat. They absolutely know what they did. Why is their EDK so high? Get them out of here. I'm like, literally use this hell element and it's easier to hell. Get out of here. <laughs> Promethean noticing the bunny switched out for the other bunny. I think they just needed a little bit of an XP boost. There we go. Happy level 80. 
Uh, these pet arms are gonna stand up and die basically instantly. Pretty much. <laughs> Just... Again, I barely have to do anything with this much Gafoe stack. Almost feel bad for them, but then I'm like, it's it's episode two. They know what they did. So many drops. I don't know where the HP material is. I give up. It's in here somewhere. I tried. I got one of the materials. That's all that matters. Yeah, I definitely feel bad when it comes to, like, the community. I basically did not... In fact, to this day, I have, like, no posts in, like, anywhere. Like, you could search me in general or, like, help or trade. I think I have, like, a total of 10 messages <laughs> across, like, six years. I really have barely posted anything. It's so rare that I do anything. Let alone in, like, the Affinia forums, where I only remember honestly sending a few messages. So I figured I would get back eventually just by doing some of the guides. A lot of people have questions, and some of the information is now being more centralized. That's always good to see uh, things like the class guides getting really bulked up uh, in the past two years compared to where they were at like 2021. Poor Rappies. They do not stand a chance against two Phonumen sacking Gafoe. I'm sorry, it's too much damage. So that reminds me, chat, we're gonna have to talk a bit more. <laughs> more Millily spams. We're gonna have to name some uh, challenge mode weapons. We'll have to come up with some names. I think we had, uh... I don't remember all chat suggestions. There was a, there's a couple. They need to be written down, I think, in the Discord for me to track them a bit better. Cookie Monster. There's one that was along the lines of, like, disgusting. <laughs> something like that. And then chat trolling me with, I'm like, just call it something else. And so somebody wants to be named something else. I know one of the names suggested was Helen for whatever hell equipment, whether it's a shot or spread needle or something like that. Of these. Yeah, let Chad decide the names for most of them. If I pick up others, you know, there might be some spares. Especially if I want to load it out to other players. Yeah, that was the other thing I wasn't sure about, how long the fields were. Thank you for verifying it to eight characters. And so I, I've never completed challenge mode before. We are supposed to do it earlier in the, re in the year, but other things came up, unfortunately. Life said no. Demon Needle. I think it's more like... 
the 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 needle i don't think it's part of the name i thought i thought it like if it's a shot it just says like your name and then shot could be wrong Pretty sure how it works. Yeah, because I usually see people with it. I'm assuming some of that is not like intentional. I know when you drop the item, it'll say like drop shot, drop needles. That's what made me kind of think it worked that way earlier today. There we go. We're getting closer. I was gonna say Promethean. If you want, just for you, Promethean, if you'd like me to do a couple of cookies right as you get near uh, 80, well, we can hop over to episode four. We have two forces. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. That'll make Promethean happy. I do want some chances at Ignition Cloak. I figured I'd give it a shot at some point. Oh no, banned from Cookie Runs, truth. Uh oh, facts. <laughs> we need Tiggy, damn. Some decent items, I guess. These. All these enemies to go away. Freeze trap because I can. giving advice on feeding mags. Yeah, I think there's like five or six tables that mo pretty much every mag will fall under. Damn, yeah, unloved SJS in the chat. <laughs> I saw that. Not even tacked. Time to slash lobby. We'll do it for you, Promethean. I'm gonna make an episode four game. The desire for cookie empowers all. Do two cookie run, two cookie quests. Just a little, little taste of the cookie quest. Two forces, it should go pretty quickly. Uh, uh, buy two cookies. Inventory full. Got that again. Um, it's 78 silver again. Jeez. Any? could try to bring demons. Hmm. 
Oh, that's right. She could technically use my demon sniper. That's kind of hilarious. Uh, she should probably just use, what's it called? Slicer. Which she can't use because she doesn't have enough ATP. Damn. Well, time to break the old bringers out of retirement, I suppose. One of these. And, oh, monofluids. I'm like, how am I out of space? I barely hold anything. Got trolled. I'll bring some demons, because it'll still work on lower difficulties. So as a reminder, uh, demons only gets reduced for casts at ultimate, so <laughs> might as well just be the one that shoots. Sadly, not enough ATP to actually use Slicer Fanatic. Would have been helpful. There we go. It's time to cookie. Okay, hopefully have enough health to survive. I know they do a lot of damage, but I should at least have D-band here. Oh, we actually finished the soundtrack. I was not expecting that. Um, one second. What's it put on? I'll put this on for now. They died so quick I couldn't tell what their weaknesses were, other than Gafoe stacking. Speaking of Gafoe stacking, that is some nasty Gafoe stacking. Uh, Gafoe stacking does not care at all what they want, GG. Accuracy land. That feeling when you have a hundred percent chance to hit and you still miss. Thank you, demon shot. You're still somewhat useful here. Less hell shot. Got a seal J sword, nice. That's so much damage. Wait, did I just level twice? Wait, what? I got nine attack on that level up. Did you see that? Huh. Very rare you see the double level up. XP is just a little bonkers. So we're averaging around 200 XP a second, nothing too crazy. Now we're averaging 317 plus. You know, literally higher than most ultimate quests right now. What a what a fair quest. Oh, I almost got them. Oh boy, 
this Kapoe stack is gonna be nasty. What can they do? Damn them and their near invincibility to EDK kills. Stupid Marissa's. I wanted to hell you out of existence. Oh well. Guess I gotta play semi legit. Wow, that freeze trap took like 20 years to detonate. True story. There we go. Semi legit hell kill you and bunny murder everything. I'm getting some hell kills. <laughs> they're, they, they're not very legit, but they, they do happen. I'm like, listen. I could kill the Gorons. Hey, look at that. I killed like three right there. I did it. Thank you, Hell. Uh, bringer's time. Goodbye, Greta Bulu. Sure would suck if I uh, shot you with a uh, cannon rouge. Kevin Striker code equals cookie. Noted. Got a bazooka, but that's about it. I don't feel like picking it up. We'll do one more. Mostly just looking for these materials. Here they are. And what in hindsight, I don't think we ever listened to the Etrian Untold soundtrack start to finish. I could put that on next. We were listening to a song from it already, as well as. I have negative 17,000 a level. That's good. Thank you, Bubble Up Indicator. Oh, I want that Trimate for sure. Rappy's Beak makes Rappy Mag. Indeed it does. Toast another one. Time. Poor XP reader. I leveled too quickly for it. It got confused by the double level up. Yeah, there we go. Multi kill. I'll let them kill the satellite lizards. They're too annoying for me. Items for help, please. I'm so happy the Kofi Sack is here. I do not want to deal with this as a ranger. Nice kill. Nice kill. This 
listen to the peaceful forest music as we kill literally everything. Goodbye, all these enemies. This might be your home, but it's ours now. Hey, Chan, we're here to just purge all the enemies here. Mind us. Good, good old purging. Wow, I can't believe the hell still works there. That's so dumb. Can you imagine if Episode 4 Ultimate was like that? I could just do that and kill the Goron Detonator. How much time that would save. Jaya's no hit worth mentioning though. It's got your first partisan, nice. I like that item type more than sword. I like that it's more like forward hitting than like side to side. Yeah, I just ended up using that as my main weapon type, though sadly, that was gonna have less damage than the sword. Oh, a photon crystal dropped, interesting. these proc chances. But here we go. Glad you're able to use the Partisan now, Mr. Rogers. Okay, we're picking up a lot of Partisan-type weapons called the Jaya. They're still used at high-end play. Depending on the character, of course. Ouch. I got another 9 attack. How much XP are these guys worth that I'm getting a double level of? Kind of insane. At this rate, I'm tempted to just have another one. Just to watch the double level up again. Bust actually busted. Alright, uh, they're both within kill range. She got a chunk. Bonk. Alright, let's put some of these items away. One more cookie. Well, they get a nice 45. Get Promethean to 80 with the cookie. Speed up the run a little bit. Then we'll go back to some standard runs. There we 
we go. Just for you, Promethean. You'll probably still hit like 82. <laughs> There's so much XP on this quest. There we go. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I got the only room clear I can consistently do. Nice level 80. I don't know how I didn't die for that. I'm going to be real with you. It was right against me and it triple fireball twice, but I only got hit once. I guess that's the difference between ultimate and very hard. Ultimate, that would have killed me. Welcome in, Parameter. Oh, sadly, we're not seeing any rare wrapping. Oh, well. Discuss characters in Ultimate now. Nice. I'm gonna say, you just gotta find a high hit caliber equivalency. That'll afford infinite cookies. Down to one HP. That now that is a demon. Took it from four to one. Assert dominance. Nice, got the hell. Yeah, I didn't realize on very hard mode how useful hell was in episode four, to be honest. I saw it used a couple of times, but I, I didn't really grasp their EDKs until I had to use it myself. It was actually surprisingly useful. So this is definitely making me want to get a hell shot, like, full time. It's because there's so many rooms I could just do this on. Snap. Oh, 40 hit giant? Nice. There we go. You hit 80, 81 already. Nice. It hit 73. You know what? I didn't die instantly. That's all that matters. <laughs> I was gonna say for Promethean everything is how many cookies is it worth <laughs> here we go let's get rid of these I was gonna say, did it roll with any other attributes? I'm just curious. All zero. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, th the song Get the Treasure starts playing as we talk about the 40 hit giant. Indeed, Roma Battery. I want to freeze trap this. They are in my face and I don't appreciate it. 
on hell. It's so unlikely to hit, but you still believe anyway. You know, for not having any, uh... Oh, I love that I'm actually at max accuracy, so I could probably wear a Heavenly Power to finish it off if I wanted to. For a character that has, like, an absolutely terrible mag for them, I find it kind of funny that I am, uh, killing with ATP. Oh no, not this song. I hate Primitive Jungle. This place sucked. I'm gonna bad strain to figure out how to get Max Cookie. Oh no. I think I double leveled again. Why does I have in Striker Code? That is gonna save a lot of time that I lost in single player. So even though like we we kind of messed around for almost an hour, we've almost caught up to the multiplayer. It's a couple runs. Kind of silly. Also. I accidentally equipped the armor that I picked up earlier. Get rid of that. Curiosity, am I capped on badges again? Like, already? <laughs> the span of three days that I cap badges? I mean, that's pretty close, chat. I mean, I'm at 79 silver? I remember last Monday... I put all my badges away, so I think I have another stack of almost 80. Kinda silly. Oh, oops. I'm gonna talk to the guy. I need my money. I'm like, where's my money? Okay. Yeah, probably like three or four more CCCs I should level. Save the cookies now. Here, give a little jump start. Too bad. Drop. I want that for sure. Just realized you had the wrong merge on. No worries. Very hard mode is fairly forgiving. You don't need to be like magical piece of Bowie merge. It's nice if you have it, but very hard mode Gafoe stacking we saw with like 300 less MST than Cap is still enough to kill. little clean up here. Would you say you can rel reliably clear CCC on very hard given the right gear and stats? Um, for the most part, I mean, Gafoe stacking kills most things, so it's more just a question of like 
How do you kill like the yellow demon creatures, whatever they're called? Because Dark Belra dies to you, Lily dies to you, regular Arlen dies to you, Moths died into you. There's a lot of enemies that just explode as long as you can Bowie Sack. You don't really like need other elements for them. Even Spaceship to agree is not too bad until you get to uh not the wolves, the wolves are easy. The guild chicks. The guild chicks just don't take any damage from Gafoe. So, in a multiplayer run, it's fine for them to spam Gafoe still, because they're just stacking up for, like, the sorcerers here that die instantly due to Gafoe. So, it's more my job as a hell user to clear those. I feel like a lot of what the force does in multiplayer is called not my problem. <laughs> they're like, I'm Gafoe stacking. If it doesn't work, it's not my problem. Where more often than not, having the stack for like the next two waves is just inherently better than trying to kill the guild chick with damage. Because for the most part, unless somebody is like straight up ATPing, it's always just gonna be slower than somebody helling. I don't know why I walked over to this corner. It's made a bad angle. Could have just walked back earlier. Because you'll see that they instantly kill sorcerers. It's definitely much easier in single player due to not only reduce HP, but reduce, reduce resistances in general for the elemental damage. Yeah, they're, they're literally just going to sit still and spam. Things like pan arms also will die nearly instantly. Switches will die nearly instantly. Yeah, like, see that enemy? It would have taken like six more fireballs, but no more Kafoe. Poor XP reader. Couldn't handle the level ups. Foley's like cookies, you always want more. Foley is really, really strong. Honestly, I would say the only point where it starts to fall off is probably three forces. Two force Kafoe stacking is actually stupid. You basically remove all of their bonus resists and you still kill them instantly. So it's really just up to the hell users to finish it quickly. See how they killed like almost literally the whole room? That was just Gafoe, by the way. Like I barely did anything in that final wave. It's just the fact that there's like five Gafoe's out and then another four Gafoe's out and they take 1400 damage of their 1500 and then die one Gafoe later. It's basically all that happens to them over and over. Like I could save some time here with like the Sinospiggles. They do okay versus Marilla's. It's just the sad part is you, if you're in single player, you have to move, summon them. He's there, actually exploding. He's also die quickly to the Marillas, Marillitas, somewhat die quickly. Demons, please. I have a 131% chance of landing it, chat. I missed it three times in a row. <laughs> Game please. What are what are these demon odds? So sad. Even the gibbons to an extent could be exploded by them if they stack it. Rather silly. So, it is nice to be able to use the Rock Seal for her hit accuracy bonus over something like a Rock Cast, who's more suited for uh, RT. It's 
So I'm hoping I have enough HP to survive the Delve Eater. I hope. Did level a lot. I have another 50 hit points. And again, they're gonna find like the double stack Gafoe's gonna defeat Del Beater. It's gonna kill Dolums. It's not gonna kill Rico Boxes. Weirdly enough, the Rico Boxes are like unkillable, the forces. Those things are like actually so sad how tanky they are versus Force. Every other player, they're just like a joke enemy. Forces are like, oh no, I'm not doing any damage today. Why do they have 80 resist? Who knows? Yeah, I mean, that's why you're not going to use spells on, like, you just, you don't want to. So, they're, they're going to, they're going to stack because it's very hard mode on those enemies, but, like, I'm going to be using demons to kill them and or health, like, on the enemy. Kind of like the miracles. Like, it is 3,000 health. I could attack it normally, or I could shoot it twice and kill it. Demons. There's going to be kind of like a cutoff point. If health more than 3k, I don't care. I'm demoning them. Let's get rid of them. So the Rico boxes that would take like 5 million spells to kill, I'm going to try to hell them. That means I need to stand in the corner to get a good angle later. But I don't like this camera angle due to the uh, weird thing that blocks the view. Yeah, like, see, those just die instantly to me. Meanwhile, they could cast, like, maybe five spells and kill them. Or I just shoot them once. Like, legit, it's just kind of unfair how much better hell is. That quadruple box break was disgusting. Um, since they're stacking Gafoe, the Morpho should basically die here. I shouldn't have to do anything. Hey, there's a god battle. Did anybody viewing the stream currently not have at least a god battle? Would you like a god battle? I do not want a god battle. It is not useful to me in the slightest. The free giveaway will be later. I, d I don't want it. What are the stats? It's 20% attack speed. I only use Heavenly Battle and above. But if you don't have one, it's better than nothing. Does it count casting? No. Got run over. Above Heavenly Battle? It's called V101. <laughs> Get these things. Alright, I'll give it to Pun a little bit. Once we're done leveling, just remind me, Pun. I'll just literally hand it to you. We're not too far off. We're like maybe 40 minutes? Not even? Not even, like 30 minutes. And honestly, maybe even faster with how fast these things are dying. Oh god, leave me alone, Delveters. Mostly got him. I'm so dead if they shoot me. I am surprised they didn't kill me. Oh look, another god battle. Oh look, another Del Beater in my face. Leave me alone. There we go. You know, I'm feeling a little targeted. <laughs> I'm just gonna say, there were like three people over there and it went the max distance to hit me. It was kind of rude. I don't appreciate that from the enemy. Can 
I even hell any of this? Sort of. Yeah, I'm at the point where I think I'm gonna lobby. Battle's a little silly. Cheat the recon boxes, though. Yeah, that camera angle is booty. I hate it. <laughs> oh gosh, I touched, I touched it by accident. I got sucked into the void. Yeah, that, that's a classic PSO camera. They're like, listen, we're really excited we can change your force for push your perspective into other things. I'm like, thanks, I hate it. <laughs> this one is special. Very special. I I'm gonna give up. This this area is just too annoying for me. Bye. Uh pun, did you just while they're dealing with that, did you just wanna hop in a game real quick? Come join me in uh very hard. Or you know what? I'll make it normal. Make it real quick. I'll just literally give you the two god battles. Otherwise, I'm just never going to use them. I'd rather it go to a happy home. It'll be in block two. It's a chance of like some. I mean, you're not wrong, remote battery. Usually, this is literally fodder. How many team points does it worth? Just one, right? Oh, it was worth 10. Well, that's a surprisingly high amount of team points, but it doesn't matter. Don't need to either way. We'll give Pun a moment or so. And we'll go back to very hard mode. Assuming that is Pun. Boom, boom, all yours. Flash lobby. Anyway, back to murder. Maybe. Depends on how many kills I actually get. Since XP is variable, sadly. Like, I'll try to get kills, but I don't know if it'll happen. Speaking of, uh, not gonna happen. <laughs> what was that? EDK. I went, nope, nope, nope. Welcome, Draco Cougar. Hope you're doing well. Oh no, not PSO2 jokes. <laughs> I remember people spamming that in the PSO2 lobbies. Listen, there's not a lot I'm gonna remember about that game after giving up on it. I'll never forget the invasion of the banana outfit. The uh, interesting. I saw it all the time. Every time I left lobby for like one month, somebody would do it. I seal J sword. Have you considered playing on Clementine? Me? Uh, 
maybe, but I don't really know PSU that well. Oh, the Apexing system was terrible. There's there's a lot of like we'll call them early 2000s because honestly they kind of were microtransactions. Pretty uh, deplorable from Sega. Made me kind of very lukewarm at best, even though like some of the combat was fun. Some, I will say. But yeah, the story was whoo. Well, that was that was some hot dumpster garbage fire. <laughs> Just like holy, the whole reverse Isekai. Talk about everything I don't want in PSO. It was uh actually horrendous. Oh, I hard quit. I was like, listen, it wants me to fight like the battleship Yamato or whatever it was called. I'm like, hell no, this is stupid. What does this have to do with like the game that I started playing? I'm gonna play this, whatever this game is. Like, no thank you. It's kind of like if you told somebody like, why don't you just insert the most generic isekai anime plot thing ever and just allegedly call it PSO? It had almost nothing to do with PSO. It honestly came off as like a Saturday morning cartoon. Felt kind of trashy. And even just like the story narrative was just a mess. Even before you talk about the dumpster fire that is for the whole like Japan universe, whatever they called it. Like let's let's be honest, it's just it was just Japan. Don't call it anything other than that. The Japan land was uh really overly long, and then they just kind of never reference it again in the story. <laughs> like thank you, <laughs> just it is what it is. I haven't played PSU. PSU. If, if there's a plot in that game, I don't know. Die no hit, sadly. But that's what I'm talking about. Like, that's just not what I picture when we play PSO. I'm gonna go to, like, strange alien planets, not. Things I saw in my Japanese vacation. You know what I mean? Like, I don't really want to fight giant ponies and stuff like that. I, if I want to do that, I could do that in any other game. Like, I'll just play like an Onimusha or something, right? Just nothing, nothing about that strikes me as like PSO. Don't get me started about the Las Vegas stuff. Oh my gosh. Some of that is repressed. That was thoroughly unenjoyable. I don't know. It's like they set up like this whole big universe and the whole point like I guess where I would do like the th the themes of like PSO versus like the later ones that I played. I like the theme of having like limited health and or 
like a sense of isolation as you're on like the journey in the story or just doing stuff with friends like it's just you and four people or up to three other people have to deal with like the crazy world existential crisis and do some kind of investigation and then pso2 was like do you want to have a navigator talk to you like every five minutes and just assume that you don't know how to do anything at all times no well too bad so I was just instantly just getting irked by them. I was just like, I don't really want your advice. I just wanna just wanna do things. I <laughs> don't yeah. I always like, yeah, no, I definitely did not like the fairy in Ocarina of Time. This is one of the reasons I, I could not get through Ocarina of Time. I just got tired of it telling me, hey. I'm like, you know what? You want to bother me so much? Power off. So I, I have not bothered being Ocarina of Time. Of like, I have a limitation for how annoying it gets. Like, it really is just like every five seconds. Like, please stop. Yeah, I, I have I basically have not really touched Zelda since then. Ooh, destruction of Baguette's Bouquet. It's kind of like I'll give a similar example. Like it's Rain Odyssey, you play with the party, and you interact with people every now and then as you go through the different floors. And then I played Persona Q, and they dumped it down real bad. So that like more casual players can play Etrian style combat. And I know it drove me absolutely wild. I was getting a tutorial in that game in the final dungeon of the game. I'm like, I'm like, listen, chill. Listen. <laughs> I I have beaten every FOE on my way here. I don't need to be told how to observe their movement patterns on the fifth dungeon. I'm sorry. That that ship sailed. That sailed on the first dungeon. <laughs> like, I don't. I don't want these tutorials. I'm sorry. I don't like it narratively. Yeah, the game is very disappointing. I'm like, listen, I really like Etrian. I could not finish. I cannot force myself to beat it. I did get to the final dungeon, and then they started tutorialing me. I, I just turned it off. Just right then and there. I'm like, you know what? If they're gonna hold my hand this much, I I'm done. It's fine. Go beat your own game at this point. Done. I did think it was really sad, though, that they have a puzzle element, and there's literally an option to have the game solve the problem for you. I'm like, listen, I don't like puzzles, but even I think that's kind of sad. Like, what was the target audience for this game? What, like, how young? I'm just curious. Oh, there's Chris, by the way. Welcome, Chris. I just saw the name. To me, it was a wall of color in the Twitch chat. I looked on the uh, stream itself. <laughs> well, Zestaria... Well, see, Zestaria was more of a spike playthrough. I wouldn't say that I enjoyed Zestaria. It's more of a... How could they possibly make it worse? And then I'm like, fascinating. Truly a train wreck of script writing. One of the worst games I've played. I think it actually oh, transcends the So Bad It's Good, though. I think my favorite was that they're like, hold on, everybody. We gotta, we gotta investigate the Pope. <laughs> yeah, we, we gotta find out if there's a non-violent way to deal with the situation. Literally five minutes later, you kill the Pope. <laughs> like, what are they... <laughs> like, it, are we sure this isn't supposed to be a comedy? Are we sure? Hilarious. Oh, keep on kimping on. Oh my gosh. You know that's a quote. I think it's just keep on. If you, if you want it. That, that quote in context is one of the dumbest scenes I've ever seen. Truly fantastic. Keep on keeping on. <laughs> he was so stupid. 
It was supposed to be a really serious moment, and it just absolutely blew it with keep on keeping on. Holy. I was like actually in tears the first time I heard it. <laughs> it, it really was between two of the worst characters. <laughs> it's like there it was like the lowest stakes. <laughs> I'm just gonna slash lobby once this teleports me. That was uh That was interesting. Yeah. I mean you you can also check online too. People allegedly, I'm, I'm gonna say allegedly, I promise you this is true, claim that it, Tales of Eternia has great writing. <laughs> I'm like, counter argument, seven years. <laughs> Hard counter. Oh, on my screen I'm 79. It's a little broken, hold on, let me uh... Yeah, 79 on Twitch. Yeah, if you look at Twitch. <laughs> Hold on, let's. I, I'm 0 XP to level 80. Hold on, did I level? Is the game just really confused? Let's see, what level am I? <laughs> we did betray you. Oh my gosh. Oh, I am level 80. Nice. Thank you, thank you Chad. It was. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I was ready to keep going. I allegedly did not level on my screen. So there you go. We leveled so hard the game broke. Witness here. The double level ups really confused the game on my side. You all witnessed. There was a solid 30 second clip of me not being level 80. So I guess I'll hand over most of these items back to Hellcleave then. Make another game. But uh, what, what did we learn on our journey through here? Um, solo was useful in some ways, but it, I think around very hard, no, around hard mode, I felt like it wasn't super worth doing at that point. I felt for normal, it was pretty quick. And I think that kind of follows the same rule of thumb for when we do like episode four leveling, where I find it's just so much faster to level in normal, whether it's Gafoe stacking in episode four or hell shotting. So, we did also learn where to stand a little better in CCC, so I feel like we did improve our gameplay a little bit. Plus, I learned where to cannon Bruges, so... And we'll give Hellcleave back his items. <laughs> Before it goes into the abyss. <laughs> for, for our game, it had no idea what level I was. I've never seen level breaking like that before, though. That's new. We had that happen the other day, too. Just think about how many times we've power leveled. Especially with cookie quests, and we've never had a glitch like that before. So that was interesting. But anyway, chat, I think so concludes our journey to 80. Messing around with some different things. But thank you for humoring me with my uh, solo testing. And then helping me the rest of the way through. I think with that, chat, we are going to go ahead and say goodbye to YouTube. So if you did watch to this point in the video of the VOD, I'd just like to say thank you for watching YouTube, and see you in the next part.